Okay, the good old vertical discontinuity with kinetic demand analysis. So we learned in uh, the first video that I made that there is a vertical gap, but why does that actually occur? Well, to make this make sense, I've drawn a whole host of uh, lines on here, which I'm going to explain. Um, in truth, I want to keep this really simple, no maths or anything like that, just keep it nice and easy. So what's going on here? Well, I've drawn the kinetic demand curve, which is just down here, and we know from the last video that that um, takes into account two demand curves. You've got one demand curve in blue, and you've got one demand curve in red. Okay? And with those two demand curves, you've also got a corresponding marginal revenue curve, which is twice as steep. Right? So I've drawn the marginal revenue curve for number one, so the first part of the demand curve, down here. That's that marginal revenue curve. And for the red part of the demand curve, I've drawn the corresponding marginal revenue curve, which is labeled number two there. Okay? Right, so what's actually going on? Well, we start off with the blue demand curve. So the corresponding marginal revenue curve is going to be twice as steep up until the kink, which is where this blue dot is. Up until that kink, we are now forgetting this demand curve. And the next red demand curve takes over. But, at this level of quantity Q1, the red marginal revenue curve, which corresponds to the, the red demand curve, actually starts down here. There is no connection that takes place within this, within this gap. So as I've drawn the green line, there is no place where the red marginal revenue curve connects with the blue marginal revenue curve. There is a discontinuity there. Okay, so at that level of Q1, the red marginal revenue curve starts there. Which is why we connect them up with a vertical line. And then we carry on as normal. Okay, so that's the basic understanding. No matter how you draw your marginal revenue curves, you will always have a vertical gap. Okay, because the two curves, the two marginal revenue curves, do not intersect at the level of Q1 that you've derived from the kink. That's the basic understanding of it. If you want to have a go at drawing them, you'll realise. Draw your curves out, draw every single curve fully, and you'll realise there's always going to be a vertical space there. Which is why when we draw marginal cost curves going through it, we always end up back at P1. I hope that makes sense. Keep it nice and simple. See you next time.